Hello friends and greetings for the day. Welcome back to another tutorial on ISTQB Specialist Performance Tester Certification. We are in chapter two talking about performance measurement fundamentals. We have covered all the tutorials of this chapter and it's time to move into the sample questions to understand what could be the typical way of questions being asked to you from the content of this particular chapter. To begin with, the very first thing is, of course, to understand the exam structure, to understand the number of questions which you can expect and at what K levels. So we have all together four questions being asked to you from this particular chapter, and they are distributed between K1 and K2, where K1, there will be just one question talking about any particular definition or meaning word, and K2, where you need to understand all of the remaining topics, and you will have three questions coming at K2. But nothing to worry as far as they are K1 and K2. So let's look and get started with the sample questions from here. The very first question coming in here is which of the following is a true statement regarding tracking matrices for network latency during a performance test? And of course, the very first thing you need to recall about this is that what exactly network latency is and of course, how do you basically track? So we, if you remember, we had a question talking about uh, the concept on the tracking of matrices and that could be from anywhere, but how do you exactly track the things and we will be more importantly looking at that particular concept here. So let's look at the options on that point of view. And uh, we have the very first option is high latency could indicate a network bandwidth problem that could negatively impact performance. So now when it comes to the uh, impact of the network latency. A high network latency means that there are delays occurring in the network which may be due to the inadequate bandwidth and that's where it can turn out to be uh, complicated in terms of the performance and people may not be expected to get that response what they are looking at. So this sounds a little more relevant to the answer but let's look at the other options before we decide. It's a very good habit to make sure that you do justify yourself if the other options are up to the mark. Uh, no. So B, low latency could indicate a network bandwidth problem that could negatively impact. No, that's the other way around. So if it is high latency, then only it becomes a problem uh, to the impact of the performance, but the, not the low latency. C, network latency is difficult to track and should not be included in performance metrics. Now here, if you're talking about uh, the networks, then of course that becomes another thing to be conducted. Like, you know, network latency is difficult to track, but it, it is not true because this is trackable with the right set of tools. And of course we do have a number of tools available to do this job. So this could not be the right answer again. And uh, when it comes to D network latency, it's too variable to be useful during uh, performance tuning. And that goes with understanding that, of course, it is not true again, because there is a variab variability that needs to be understood as a part of the performance test, because these variabilities can create an impact. And we just don't want to say as a positive that network latency is too variable to be useful during performance tuning. Of course, that could be a part of it. If it is, it has to be monitored and considered in terms of uh, improvising the overall performance. So putting it all together, the right answer here is A, high latency could indicate a network bandwidth problem that could negatively impact performance. Well, moving to the next one, that is discussion number two, should performance test result be aggregated? I think that's a very straightforward question. I think we had a topic that how to aggregate performance results. So no questions asked here. Of course, we should aggregate it, but the question is made a slightly difficult if you understand the meaning that why should we aggregate it? So here, the question is not just like yes or no, true or false. They are giving you certain reasons and you need to pick up, okay, we do understand it is yes, but why? So you need to pick the right option. In that case, if you are sure about the topics which you have learned, you can eliminate C and D straightforward because it says it's not really important to aggregate the uh, results of the performance test. But if you remember, there are several matrices which are used, but that cannot be used directly as an outcome or con conclusion of the performance test. So we, we look forward to 
concatenate them together, put them together to call it as a performance test result. So the answer could be only from A and B. So let's look into those options. A, yes, this gives a better overall picture of the performance of the system and helps to identify the trends. Now I think that looks more relevant here. The only reason is uh, aggregated results uh, definitely help you to provide the big picture and to observe consistent trends. Aggregating the results helps to identify and understand the importance of outliers and to know which ones are interesting versus just the abbreviations, like basic important things. So when you aggregate them, you come out with a summary, you come out with a conclusion, but just not some statistics which does not justify anything. So yes, that looks the more most important thing to be considered as the right answer, but we don't just want to take chance with the option B. So B says, yes, this is the best way to focus on the outliers in the performance matrix. Uh, is not correct because aggregating results will eliminate the information on the outlier, just like what we discussed for the option A. So it's just not going to take it to that longer. So it's not appropriate compared to A, where A says that, you know, why we are not looking forward to it. And it's just not about the outliers. So the right answer here is, a, yes, this gives a better overall picture of the performance of the system and helps to identify the trends. That's the main reason why you accumulate results or aggregate results. Moving to the next question, number three, which of the following is a failure that could would typically be found by conducting a spike test? Now, the very first thing you need to do here is recall the definition of spike, which generally means to have a sudden increment in the number of users um, out of the you know entire schedule. So when we have a great number or more number of users logging in or working on the application at the same time, suddenly, like all of a sudden, there's a great spike uh, on the graph. And you know you talk about that, you call it as spike. Now, so which one of the following is a failure that would typically be found by conducting spike testing? Let's look at the options. We have got option A, the system performance gradually decreases. I think spike is something which happens all of a sudden. So gradual decrease could not be a provision for us. So it's not correct at all because this is a result of the endurance test where endurance test involves continuous apply application of the load, continuous adding of the data to the system for a prolonged period of time. So of course the performance will degrade gradually in the case of endurance testing, not in spike. B, the system provides inconsistent responses to the errors. And again here, this is not correct because this is an example of resource degradation over time, but nothing to do with the sudden increment of the users, but does go with the resource uh, utilization or resource degradation. Looking at option C, the system handles a sudden burst of activity, but can't resume a steady state. Seems to be absolutely the definition of spike testing and definitely talking about the you know the outcome of a uh, spike test which can be uh, seen as a problem when we do that so of course burst of uh, sudden activity which could be definitely conducted by multiple users and uh, but can't resume a steady state after that when the people log out so it seems like more relevant but let's cross check with the d the system performs well for the expected load but can't scale to a larger load now there again this seems to be wrong because is it this is not correct because this is the result of a scalability testing where you talk about adding uh, more number of users uh, back to the system and that could be done without that as well and that that has nothing to do with a spike which is a scenario in fact uh, not the uh, the spike test which basically is an ongoing process or ongoing of execution of a scenario well putting it all together the right answer here is c the system handles a sudden burst of activities but can't resume a steady state so that's all from this particular tutorial team it was uh, really a good chapter to understand and force good questions to expect from here but uh, we'll be looking forward to the upcoming chapters soon and uh, you can look forward to the next tutorial for the chapter three so that's all from this particular tutorial should you have anything else feel free to comment below i'm always there to address your queries and answer them well till then keep learning keep exploring keep understanding the context thanks for watching the video team and happy learning